All right, so round two of kernel modification, and last time we looked at adding governors to our kernel, and that worked out really great. We were able to add the darkness governor to the kernel, and uh, actually uh, it worked for the big cores, but not for the little cores, so there was still probably some fine-tuning that we could do there. Um, you know, it, uh, it kind of does depend on what something was originally written for. Uh, a lot of uh, governors out there and a lot of IO schedulers were written, you know, with when older technology was available. <coughs> Excuse me. So something to consider is it might be difficult to figure out, well, what do I need when it comes to governors? And a quick thing that you could just search for is XDA um, governor explained. There we go. And uh, this ties in with uh, with the I/O schedulers as well, but just something to uh, to consider. So what we have here on XDA uh, is uh, um, somebody had posted this as well, and it's just a list of all the different governors. Uh, that they knew of at the time. And there's still even more governors than are known here, but just lots of them in here. And you could read about them. Uh, for instance, we just did the darkness governor, so you could control find darkness. And that one's not on the list. So um, how about nightmare is probably on the list. There we go. So there's a couple of these lists out there. And uh, um, so... Um, maybe let's uh, take a look at these other ones because I, I think there's another list that also includes all of the I.O. schedulers as well so that one's not there that one's not there anymore either let me see nope, that one's dead link and that one's no good at all. Um, uh, guide to governors. Okay, so this guy looks like he's kind of quoting the same list. Let's see if there's. Nope, that didn't help us any. Yes. Okay. So this one would be the one that uh, that I was looking for. So this one by J P Kelly 5 Governors explained here on XDA. It's under the Epic 4G Touch Epic 4G Touch General. But uh, so he explains all of these different governors. Um, let's see if he has the darkness on here. He does not. But you know, so not every governor is going to be covered, but a lot of them are. A lot of good things you can read about them and how they work and what uh, kind of the story is behind some of them. Uh, and then towards the bottom here, he also has uh, schedulers. And you know, so we're going to be adding an I/O scheduler and. And so what exactly does that do? And here, just a real brief explanation. I'm just going to read exactly what he wrote. In a multitasking operating system, there must be an instance, the process that wants to run CPU time. There must be an instance, the process that wants to run CPU time and allocates it goes to sleep after the allotted time, time slice again. Wow. Um, doesn't translate to English very well. But uh, this instance is called a scheduler, such as opening and closing applications. That is how fast they are open, how long they are kept in RAM. Uh, so this will help control, essentially, reading and writing to disks and when uh, processes get, uh, get sent in to get processed. So the governor just controls, like, the frequency of the chips to meet the demand of the load. Schedulers are essentially scheduling 
whose turn it is next to get read from, written to, processes done, and processes, uh, you know, um, organized. So, what what are some that are available? They've got a couple on here. CFQ, Deadline, VR, Simple, Noop, uh, Anticipatory, BFQ, and SIO. And those are all some good ones right there. Uh, we're going to be looking at adding FIOPS to our governor, or excuse me, to our kernel. So maybe if I type FIOPS scheduler. And here's one that covers that as well. Fiops. Let's take a look at that. So fair IOPS. The new IO scheduler is designed around the following assumptions about flash-based storage devices. No input-output seek time. Read and write input-output cost is usually different from rotating media. Time to make a request depends on the request size and high throughput and higher IOPS with low latency. So fair IOPS it tries to fix the gaps in CFQ, uh, which is completely fair queuing, and it's IOPS based, so it only targets for drives without IO seek. It's quite similar to CFQ, but the dispatch decision is made according to IOPS instead of slice. So essentially, uh, this is written for the more modern flash-based storage devices. Our phones don't have rotating media hard drives anymore. You know, well, I don't think phones ever did actually, but but it's not like a desktop that could still have rotating media um, hard drives, like platter disk type hard drives. Uh, so FAIR IOPS is trying to take advantage of flash-based storage devices, which is really great. Some of the benefits ex achieves high read and write speeds and benchmarks, faster app launching time, and overall UI experience. And that's one of the reasons I really like uh, putting the uh, FAIR IOPS into my kernel. But, uh, you know, there's lots of different options out there. Some dis disadvantages uh, can make phone lag, it says here and not good at heavy multitasking. Um, you know, there, that's uh, all of this, of course, is kind of opinion-based, as it were. But, uh, you know, I've never really had a trouble with it for multitasking, but then again, how much multitasking do you do on a cell phone? So something to think about. Um, but I just want to show you where you could look up information to understand how governors and I.O. schedulers work a little better. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's get down to business. So once again, we're taking a look at the uh, kernel LG MSM 8992, which was a 64-bit kernel that I worked on for the LG G4. And we're just looking at these commits so that way we can kind of have a guideline when we're doing our commits to our blocks to uh, MSM 8937 phone. So I added some IO schedulers. How did we go about doing that? We click on this here and let's take a look. So of course, you know, it looks like I updated the README. Um, I'm going to go to the config in ARM64 to update it to say, yep, I have uh, this config. I have added these to the to the build. And then we go to block config.ioscan where you add the option to pick your schedulers. And then you go to block make file, that if you chose that option, you can actually build it. And then you have the um, schedulers themselves uh, added in. And that's it. It's really simple to add I.O. schedulers. Now, once again, where you get them will make a huge difference on whether or not they work. For instance, uh, if you're at my um, GitHub our GitLab instance here, you see I have a repository called Kernel Tweaks that is full of different IO schedulers that uh, another gentleman, uh, Michael Harrell, uh, put all of these together in one place. I don't think he wrote them all, he just gathered them all up and I forked his repository. So I do want to give credit to, uh, to Mr. Harrell here for actually gathering it all. Um, but so, for instance, you could grab them from here. 
but depending on your kernel version, it may not work or may not help you. It's always best to get one from a kernel that's very similar to your own as far as, uh, you know, revision and patch level. So we're stealing from the MSM 8937 uh, Xiaomi, uh, essentially the uh, Redmi 3, I think, what phone this is. And we're going to steal Fiops right out of here. Uh, they have a couple in here, like Maple and Noop and uh, a few other ones that, uh, Zen, for instance, which are not in the kernel that I have, but I just want to try Fiops out this time. So we download that. Uh, why did I download it from here? It's a very similar phone, and the patch level and revision level is it's a 3.18.33, and my phone is uh, 3.18.24. So it's very close, very similar. Uh, and hopefully will work out well. So we go to our kernel, our blue, our Life One X2, our block, and we have, um, you know, all of our information that we need for I/O schedulers. Because uh, the biggest thing that I/O scheduling does is schedule block transactions. Block devices would be things like hard drives and uh, you know items like that. So. Here we are, we're in block. And you notice that we have test IO scheduler, and we have a deadline IO scheduler, and we have CFQ IO scheduler, and uh, Noop IO scheduler. So those are the four IO schedulers that this phone already had, and we're going to add FIOPS to that. So here we have in our download, I already downloaded it. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm just going to paste it in here to our block. So now I've added the, the C code, so it could be built, but we need to add it to the kconfig. And so we open our kconfig here, or excuse me, not our kconfig, our kconfig IO sched, right, which we've got right here. And so the kconfig is doing what for us? It gives us the option to build it. Do we want to build it? And so, pretty easy, we can just take uh, CFQ as our, you know, uh, example device, and we're just going to change everything about it to say, um, you know, FIOPS. So, IOSCED FIOPS, Tri-State FIOPS, uh, the FIOPS IO scheduler, and we'll just delete this whole explanation because uh, we don't really need it. And uh, this is not the default, so we'll just delete that. Uh, notice I put my initials in there because it makes it really easy for me to find later, and I highly recommend that when you're doing kernel modification. Put your initials next to it. It doesn't mean that you made it. It just means that you put this into the kernel, and it's really, really handy uh, to find it for yourself later. So we've added the FIOPS as a choice. We've set a default of yes. So if they don't specify anything in their de default config, it will get built. So they have to actually specifically say no or is not, uh, no to actually not build this because the default is yes to build it. Um, do we want to add it as an option for a default? Well, sure. So let's see. We'll take this one here, we'll copy paste. Just paste it down here, default, FIOPS, bool, uh, FIOPS, and choice, and then we need to add a default IOSCED config option. So this is just giving us the choice of actually using it. Um, as the default. Once again, I highly recommend that you do not set uh, anything new that you add to a kernel as the default, so that way you can test it out thoroughly before making it the default choice. Might as well have the phone boot up working the way it's supposed to and already does now, and then switch to your new options, try it out a little bit, and then you can decide whether or not you want to make that the default. So we've added that to our kconfig.io sched. And of course, in the same folder, we have the make file, which I already have open here. And we're going to 
copy the CFQ, and we'll change that to be FIOPS. Once again, this is case sensitive and is spelling dependent. This has to exactly match the name of the file, FIOPS-IOSCED. And if it's not perfect, it won't be able to find and build what it needs to build, FIOPS-IOSCED. Very, very important. So we'll save that. Did we save this? Yes, we did. OK, good. Uh, and then we're going to add to our default config. Now remember, we gave it an option. So we're just copying CFQ here. We gave it an option of uh, to build automatically anyways. So we didn't even need to add it here because it's, it's uh, configuration option is a default of Y. So yes, it's going to be built normally, um, but uh, but you can should go ahead and schedule or put it in here for two reasons. One, it helps other developers know that they could say no if they don't want it, but also helps other developers uh, know that it's available uh, in your kernel without having to dig through and look at everything. And then we're going to say, um, we'll grab this new for default not set, and we'll change it to FIOPS. Now one interesting thing about schedulers, you have the choice whether or not to build it, and then you have whether or not to have it as default, and then once you do choose it as default, it says config default IOSCED, you need to actually write in the name of the scheduler. Uh, I know that seems a little odd, a little different than some of the other things we work on, but just be aware that does exist, and you need to make sure you do that. Um, you can also build them as a module. Notice this IOSCED test is built as a module, and then uh, you would have to load that module to be able to use the um, IOSCED test um, scheduler. So that's all we need to do to get this ready to build. So let's bring up our build folder. Now in this case, you don't really need to make clean because you're adding something uh, to the kernel. So you could just get away with a MK boot image. But it only adds a few extra minutes to the build for me. And I really like doing clean builds because then you know everything works uh, right out of the gate, right out of the box. And it's exactly how it's supposed to be. So we're going to let this run for a few minutes, and when it's done, I will uh, pick this back up, we'll flash it to the phone, and uh, we'll uh, pull uh, some screenshots. Okay, so that build is complete. We're going to take that uh, file, and we're going to turn it into a flashable zip. So we jump into our target product, Life One x 2 which is what we're building. We grab this boot image. We'll copy that. We're going to paste it in here per the instructions of uh, my flashable zip here. We'll open that up and zip it. Of course, you always want to kind of rename it something uh, because it's going to be called your name. And we will call it, uh, in this case, AKLU blocks blocks to and uh, we'll call it uh, oh how about IO marshmallow that sounds good all right so we've got that we're gonna copy that I'm gonna transfer it over and uh, we'll flash this to the phone and see how it goes. All right, so I made a little recording. It was successful. We'll check that out. And you know, let's pause it here. So you can see uh, I clicked on scheduler, and their FIOP shows up at the bottom of the list because we had new deadline CFQ already. Uh, there's also test IO sched, but that's a module, so it needs to be loaded. So it's not loaded by default. And then there's uh, FIOPs, which we just added. And so select that, it takes, and uh, I'm able to apply that on boot. So adding a IO scheduler is probably one of the easiest things you can do uh, to your kernel. 
and it actually can have a pretty significant uh, impact on how your phone runs. So, uh, pretty fun thing to do. Hopefully, you found that useful, and uh, we will continue to uh, look at different ways that we can modify this kernel. Pretty excited about some of the stuff I'm hoping to do uh, with the blocks too, but uh, uh, hopefully you're enjoying the uh, series as well.